Namaste, Sneha. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your ever expanding schedule and talking to us at the Calm Mind series today. Uh, we know how much work you do every day and how busy you are. So thank you once again. Um, for those who are watching and who are not familiar with the work that you do, uh, before we get into things, I would like to say that uh, we deeply admire the work that you do, uh, tirelessly advocating for animals' rights and providing non-stop care for them in their darkest hours with your charity, Snehas Care in Kathmandu, Nepal. So, first of all, uh, can you please tell us about yourself, your childhood, and any inspiring role models that you had in your younger years of life? Namaste. Uh, my name is Sneha Sreshta, and I'm an animal activist and founder of Sneha's Care, working for the welfare of animals for uh, almost six years now. While growing up, I had a simple childhood. I have three sisters and one brother who are all younger than me. As being the oldest daughter of a Nepali family, I used to take care of my siblings, so I didn't have much time for having role models. <laughs> That's fair enough. <laughs> it's busy. It's a busy life, isn't it? <laughs> being the oldest one. Yeah. So when do you first remember connecting with animals? And did you have any animals growing up in your childhood home? Well, we didn't have animals in our home while growing up. I didn't like dogs, but uh, I didn't hate them either. My husband uh, always wanted to have dogs and always tried to convince me to get a dog. After lots of, and lots of convincing, I finally gave up and uh, we got two dogs in our home. I started feeding them cuddling with them and eventually I had an emotional connection with them which I still didn't realize for quite some time. It's very interesting. <laughs> so you connected with the animals in your adult life actually. <laughs> yeah. So when did you decide to start Sneha's Care and can you please tell us about the beginning of this journey? Mm, I actually had no interest of starting a dog shelter. One unfortunate day, one of my dog, Dara, was poisoned by our neighbor. She struggled for her life uh, for uh, hours while I was by her side supporting her. We tried everything, even tried to get her to hospital, but at the time, there were any organizations that could help us. Not even veterinary hospitals had emergency wards where we could take her. After a lot of struggle, she took her last breath. I couldn't hold myself all my life. I didn't like dogs and wanted nothing to do of them. But losing Jara was the most painful experience of my life. I loved her and wanted to save her without even realizing how much I loved her. Then after her funeral, I started thinking about all the dogs out of the streets, without the home, with nothing to eat. I was devastated by the thought of it. Whenever I went out and saw dogs on the streets, I could see my Jara in their eyes. This is when I decided to try and give these street animals a better life, however I could. This was the idea that gave birth to Sneha's care. Wow, that's really beautiful. <laughs> Brings tears to my eyes to hear that. Um, so then it's been quite the journey. You are now a very determined campaigner for animal rights. Uh, can you please tell us about the work that you have done in this area and what changes you have been able to achieve in Nepal? Well, since the start of Sneha's Care, we have helped more than 30,000 animals. When we first started um, helping animals on the streets, it would mostly be the human abuse and mistreatment, hit and run cases. Even when we would try to help animals, people used to curse, argue, and even fight with us. But since we started our work with the treatment and educating uh, youths in schools and colleges, things somewhat seem to have changed as we are receiving support from local communities and people. 
people are concerned uh, about animals even uh, it's not their one we receive at least 10 cases per day uh, which is quite some uh, uh, quite uh, good seeing people started uh, uh, care about animals we are doing uh, anti rabies uh, vaccinations uh, program in different uh, places of Kathmandu uh, and Lollipur to neutralize the transmission of rabies uh, uh, virus from dogs to animals. After our dog has been rescued and treated at our shelter, we spray them uh, before releasing them back to their community to reduce the number of stray dogs in the uh, street. We have been promoting veganism and uh, human treatment uh, education as uh, uh, so that people are aware uh, of the abuse they are promoting uh, because of their habits of meat consumption. Regarding cruelty, we also have been fighting against uh, the live and inhumane transport of animals like buffaloes, goats, etc. During the transport, these animals suffer long rides, sometimes up to 48 hours just to get Kathmandu. While seeing such injustice, we filed numerous cases out of which uh, the Supreme Court of Nepal has given a verdict in our favor with the strict guideline uh, while transport of live animals without inhumane treatment of those poor animals. But, but we are still not happy. Our goal is uh, to ban the transport of animals seeking uh, other alternatives of the meat demand of the country. Uh, our most recent achievement has to be veterinary service being uh, recognized as essential service uh, with the joint efforts for various organizations. This made it uh, easier for feeding and treatment of animals during lockdown. Wow, <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's quite a lot. It's a, really amazing what you've been able to achieve in, in six years, really. It's quite something. So please tell us, what does a regular day, a regular day, look like for you? <laughs> Actually, my day starts with dogs and ends with dogs. Now I have 10 dogs at home. As soon as they know I wake up, they demand my attention, curling with them, feeding them in how I start my day usually. After their demands um, have been met, I then head to the shelter, uh, which is 30, 40 minutes uh, drive from my house. Uh, then as the requirements groups are divided for the day's work, a team is usually mobilized for anti rabies vaccination program with other starts with cleaning and taking care of the shelter. Um, we have to take care of uh, injured dogs every day, clean their wounds, clean their cages, roaming areas. From the start of the lockdown, we have uh, started feeding program around the valleys. In the afternoon, we start the feeding with uh, two groups. This takes us, uh, takes uh, most of my day. After the day is done and uh, all the staffs are back at the shelter, we have briefing about the day and the next day before we need home. At my home, are still uh, waiting for me. Then uh, the usual routine of them feeding and cuddling. Wow, very busy day. <laughs> yeah. So in this day, I mean, you've just told us that uh, you are treating injured animals every day. So you obviously see very confronting uh, injuries and situations. How do you keep yourself calm and focused in the middle of, of that? And how do you cope with such a demanding workload? Mm, this immense amount of pressure while working with so many injured animals. Some injuries are so bad, it will make a normal person puke. The only thing that uh, keeps me going in these animals uh, themselves Every time I'm uh, having a tough time, I just look forward the time when the, these poor animals will recover and be healthy again. Because if I break down uh, under pressure, I cannot help those who need me. I just have this thought in my mind at, uh, all the time and this is what keeps me going every day. With love, and care, it seems that many animals that you find who have horrific injuries, they do go on to recover in full. 
it must be amazing to watch the journey of these animals from hurt, weak and sick to playful, healthy and happy. Please share some insight with us on this process. Usually with the injured animals are brought first to the shelter. They are very aggressive. Uh, some even uh, have to be seated uh, because they are so frightened, suffering from the abuse and mistreatment from humans. They don't have any trust on us. These animals have to be isolated uh, with uh, intense care, else they are harmful to both them and other animals at the shelter. As they slowly recover and uh, being fed, we start gaining their trust. Uh, they start being playful and uh, want to cuddle. Once the animal have fully recovered, we neuter them and release them back to the area they were rescued from. But if there is no one uh, in the community to look after them or, or if the environment is too abusive, we keep them at the shelter until a suitable and proper home will recover, uh, welcome them for adoption. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, looking at your social media, it is obvious that many uh, animals that you come into contact with, as, as you has, have just said, are abused. Uh, what is the attitude of the Nepali people in relation to the street animals and how are you trying to change that through education? Mm, uh, well, Nepal has a lot of animal lovers, but also a huge share of animal abusers having a majority of Hindu people and uh, witnessing animal sacrifice from an early age, people, uh, this could be also a reason for people not uh, regarding any value of animal's life. Uh, whatever the reason, many people in Nepal are still ignorant of the fact uh, that animals feel pain and suffer uh, when hurt. And when it comes to the street animals, the situation is uh, even worse. Uh, carrying a stick, uh, like if, uh, the figure can make these animals run from their life, uh, even when there is no real danger, usually from uh, trauma from the past. However, uh, in recent years, uh, this has started to change. We are conducting humane treatment and vegan education in the schools and colleges, uh, where we show them uh, the dark side from uh, what they find in the meat shops. This is the challenge. A lot of the young people are the one who have the ability to make change. Uh, older family members are the are then educated by these uh, youngers, uh, which is in influencing the Nepali society a lot. We have been focusing the young generation on visiting and volunteering at the center. So they are compassionate towards uh, animals. These are the stories uh, of people confronting animal abusers and punishing the abusers with community service or even jail. Wow. Well, I think you've basically answered the next question, which is, have you um, seen any change in how people treat and view animals since you started your charity? I think yes, you know, would be through education. Uh, would you, you can add to that if you like. Uh, it is a slow process to bring change to people's minds, especially in a country like Nepal. But still, I must say, change can be felt since the first time we started working for the welfare of animals. Whether um, it's the fear of being uh, prosecuted of actual change, it's hard to tell, but we can see some change in the way people are treating animals. We can see people at least water uh, outside the house, so the street animals can drink from there. People feeding street animals and uh, rising animal lovers. Mm. That's great. So um, what are the most common issues that you see in Nepal in relation to street animals? How big is the problem? Do you have any estimate on how many street dogs you think that there are? Mm, the problem is uh, actually very big. Nepal is a country where animals are sacrificed. 
but it is also the country the only country where uh, animals are worshiped as god yeah. there is a specific day of uh, worshiping for crows dogs cows and so on uh, there are a uh, thousand dogs just in kathmandu if not more uh, some community have groups of dogs which are aggressive and be cause harm to outsiders the aggressiveness use uh, the aggressiveness usually comes from uh, you know a past trauma of abuse from people while all of them are homeless most of them are uh, filled with the disease without uh, anyone to take care of them or even uh, feed them one meal and a day uh some end up dying on the street uh, while others are free of their one fellow streets uh, from all these you can probably calculate the how much problematic uh, current situation actually is mm. yes it's very large it seems <laughs> uh on your facebook page you've kept a diary of every single day of the lockdown which is very impressive <laughs> um currently with the restrictions uh well the changing restrictions imposed by covid-19 we can see that your workload has increased how are you managing in these times at first we even didn't have a vehicle permit to conduct our feeding program but we were determined uh, which this so we started our uh, continued it anyhow later on after the government recognized veterinary service as an essential service only then we were able to feed the poor animals without any hindrance from the authorities the early days of the lockdown were pretty strict where normal civilians were uh, weren't allowed to come out of their home so we took a uh, responsibility of feeding more than 24 2500 animals which including uh, included the dogs cows monkeys birds and other animals that we saw of the street um this was very tiring time even uh, with most of our staffs focused on cooking and feeding the uh, the feeding used to take day uh, all day from 6 am to till 7 pm and the place uh, that we were unable to reach we had help from local people uh, there are animal lovers uh, with the lockdown uh, 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 loosening up there are people uh, coming back their business it it has eased and we can focus on mobile treatment and vaccination programs but we still continue to feed in a specific area across kathmandu and lalitpur very busy <laughs> it seems uh this kind of work takes a lot of compassion you have to have a strong and consistent drive and desire to help animals what drives you to keep on doing this work how do you find the energy and motivation to work so hard day after day year after year well my biggest motivation is the animals themselves it is my love for them that keeps me going even through the tough time i'm their voice their help and their friend if i am not able to help them then uh, they will suffer with no one to help them or treat them these thoughts are what inspire me every day to keep on going mm -hmm. how has uh, covid-19 changed the way that you work and the way that you see the future Mm, this has been a truly tough time we all uh, are required to do double work because of the need of the situation despite of the lockdown none of the staffs at the shelter have been able to take a day off since the uh, start of lockdown we even had to hire more people because we needed to mobilize uh, uh, personnel in each and every area just for the feeding purpose prior to the lockdown we used to have regular visitors and volunteers at the shelter since um, uh, there are no visitors there is uh, no donation this make it uh, really hard for me to run the shelter uh, for the future i realized that uh, only one effort are insufficient uh, without the people themselves being responsible 
there is no hope uh, for the poor animals if the local people in uh, any given areas are not aware that we need to help each other to survive in this tough time. Mm. Absolutely. Can you please share with us what is the current situation in Nepal? Um, has the lockdown now finished or is it continuing? Uh, uh, with each month passing by the lockdown seem to be in less, uh, though there is only partial lockdown now. Uh, it's, it still is very risky. Uh, with the number of COVID-19 infected uh, people uh, uh, skyrocketing every day. The risk of uh, infection uh, among our staffs and uh, self is well known, but still we are trying our best to use uh, safety and promoting kids and help the poor animals. Even with the number of the infected people rising high, the government uh, uh, lifted the lockdown restriction. Uh, with the people returning to their work business, uh, it somehow has uh, helped the stray animals as they don't uh, have to rely on uh, on us. Is it possible for foreigners to adopt dogs from Nepal? How costly and difficult is the process? Uh, yes. It is possible for foreigners to adopt dogs from Nepal. The cost and the price depends on the destination and the size of puppies. Uh, if it's the case of USA, uh, we can uh, get the puppies prepared and send it in a week. But for Europe, it might take uh, somewhere from three to five months just to get them ready as per the regulations. But the process itself is really easy. When someone wants to adopt a dog, we carry out uh, all the process so the adopting families, persons so won't have any hassle. Uh, and as for the price, I can't say for sure now, but as per the uh, pet, uh, the destination and the airlines rules, we can, we can say that um, it's usually quite uh, affordable. Hmm. That's good news <laughs> for when times are better, when planes are, are going again. Uh, in better times, uh, when it was normal to travel, uh, you took in volunteers. Uh, how much do you rely on volunteers to help you run the charity and what kind of work is involved? Uh, we have been welcoming volunteers since the Sneha's uh, care uh, started. Volunteers help uh, is the workload, um, uh, which means I don't have to hire many staffs for the day uh, today activity of the shelter. Usually volunteers uh, help us uh, with cleaning the shelter, uh, bathing the dogs, grooming the dogs, and even uh, assisting the doctors and the technicians in the field. Uh, volunteers would also help uh, us get more exposure with themselves having love and uh, compassion for animals and then you know, forwarding our message to the different parts of the world they came from. Uh, what inspires you in your work and in life? Uh, everything uh, I have been doing, everything I'm now, it is all because of my baby girl, Zara. Uh, if she wouldn't have come into my life, I wouldn't have been able to find uh, my calling and love for animals. Without her, I wouldn't have been able to help and change the life of so many helpless animals, uh, those poor beings. So she is uh, with me every moment of the day, every day of the year. She may have passed on from the moral world. Uh, but she will always be an inspiration to me. She will always be my legacy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's really beautiful. <laughs> um, what would your message be to the listeners of this interview or to humanity as a whole? The message I would uh, like to send out in uh, for everyone to have compassion towards all animals, whether it's in your home or out on the street, be compassionate, 
have love and patient for the poor beings. Everyone is fighting to survive. Uh, don't make their fight tough. Uh, tougher than it's uh, already is uh, uh, as for humanity. I think there is still hope for all of us if we learn to share what we have with uh, others and hopefully the world will be a better place to live in for all of us. Yes. So yes, keep loving animals. <laughs> it's a great message. Mm -hmm. So that is all from us here at the interview. Thank you so much, Sneha. It's been a real pleasure talking to you and learning about your journey and what it means to be working on the front line in animal activism and care. We certainly need more people like you in the world. Um, Sneha's Care is in huge need of your help. If you have the ability to donate, please do so via the website, uh, snehascare.org forward slash donate. 